You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. So we're now going to be uh, talking to uh, Dave on the telephone. It's all part of a regular slot we um, do with Swale Community Leisure. As always, it's great to speak to you. Thank you very much for joining us. Pleased to be on air again then, Daniel. So I was hoping we could start off by you talking a little bit about how the uh, summer's been at the uh, Sheppey Leisure Complex. Sure. Well, it's been a very interesting summer. Um, normally, within the leisure industry, you would expect during the summer, leisure centres, particularly those with swimming pools, to be quite quiet. Um, of course, if, the, if it's nice weather, people go down the beach. They don't want to come inside and go swimming. However, I have to say, I've been quite taken aback by the number of people that have come in and visited the leisure centre, and particularly those who've wanted to go swimming. Just an estimate, but I reckon, compared to previous years, we're nearly 25% busier this summer than we have been in the past, which is quite substantial. And of course, there may be a number of factors to that. It may be that we had some bad days during the summer, although I remember some fairly sunny days, I have to say. Um, but things like um, booking up swimming lessons in advance. Um, there's more swimming lessons to take the summer this year than there has been previously. And you know, people coming along and taking part in physical activity generally seems to have been boosted as well. Well, that certainly sounds uh, good. And of course, we've had the um, Euros and the uh, Olympics this summer. Uh, has this had an impact on the number of people getting active? Well, I think it must have done. I mean, I, probably in some ways we're better off with, you know, for getting the Euros. I'm not sure we really excelled at that. But on the other hand, it was a major sporting occasion. And, of course, people are, you know, support all different countries. So it's quite possible that um, got them interested in taking part in sport and coming to the leisure centre. I do think one of the biggest things, though, has been success in the Rio Olympics. I mean, this has been our most successful Summer Olympics ever, I believe, in terms of medals. I mean, certainly in the major sports, such as swimming, athletics, um, and even triathlon this time as well. We seem to be getting better and better. Cycling continued as well in a positive vein. And I think just the way we represented ourselves on the world stage get, gets people excited and gives them the air of wanting to do something positive with their lives. And perhaps come to, you know, to the leisure centre, whether it be Sheffield or Sittingbourne or anywhere else in the country, is a natural outlet for that. But certainly it reflected well on the number of people taking part in physical activity. I also think the Paralympics this year, even though it did get some bad press, not around um, the uh, participants, but around the facilities for the Paralympians in Rio, nevertheless, there were good deal of people who've got physical and mental disabilities taking part in sports and certainly that's something we've seen an increase in people of all levels of ability coming and visiting the leisure center so i think that's been very positive not just for us but for society in general i was going to say you know it's got to inspire people when they uh, see you know people achieving stuff from uh, this country Absolutely. And um, the success is really, and, and for me, particularly in the Paralympics, has been, been outstanding. I mean, it's something that's grown and grown much more so, I guess, um, in terms of numbers of participants over recent years than the, in the mainstream um, Olympics. But, you know, of course, successes in the both really do translate to success here in the UK. And I think um, if you spoke to any business people around the country, whether it be sport and leisure, retail um, or anything else, hospitality perhaps, I think there has been an increase during the summer, um, and th which is quite strange considering, of course, we all seem to have been sidetracked by Brexit, of course. Um, but I do think, nevertheless, even with that in, taking that into account, the Olympics has inspired people to become a bit more active and to have a positive attitude towards the workplace. So that's been a success to my mind. So, uh, has there been any other events to promote? Uh... Yes, there has. Um, well, we there, there are a number of events that take place during the summer throughout the borough. But, um, one which we were involved in, and it's only the second time we've run this, was at Milton Creek Country Park, which is Sittingbourne. However, it was to represent sports and activity throughout the borough. So we have sports and activity clubs and professional organisations that support physical activity all come together at a venue called Milton Creek Country Park, which I'm sure many people will know. Milton Creek Country Park is a beautiful area of parkland. Um, just outside Sittingbourne, in between Sittingbourne and Milton Regis. And um, on that day, 
we had nearly 500 people come along and visit all the different sports clubs and activity providers that provide those kind of outlets for people with an interest in sports around the borough. Um, of those 500, I mean, it's difficult to estimate, of course, but we had a very high proportion, I have to say, of people from the Isle of Sheppey. I would say probably as much as a third, if not more. And I think that really does say something about the people of Sheppey, actually, and their willingness and you know, desire to be active and take part in positive activity. So that, that was a very positive event. And um, we also had on the same day um, some disabled children who, who re-ran a Paralympic relay around the park. And that was something to behold and watch, I have to say. If you want something inspirational, watch children with low mobility levels struggling and striving to cover a course of you know, just under a mile together to represent what they can really achieve. And that's something which does inspire everybody. So um, we often talk about the Beachfield Regeneration Project when you come up to us here at BRFM. I was hoping you could give us a little update on that. Of course. Well, that was the original reason for me coming along, of course, and we wanted to keep keep this um, project in the forefront of people's minds. And um, quite often when you have um, projects like this, they take quite a while for anything tangible to take effect. But prior to this summer, we did have some improvements in the park area, things like uh, the, um, the gazebo, which had seen better days along the walkway linking them to the Healthy Living Centre and the swimming pool, that had been dismantled and there's new lighting erected. There's been repairs to the brickwork, to the paving, and also some repairs um, to the areas outside the swimming pool. So general tidying up. Only, only in a small way, but it is a, it is a stepping, stepping stone. We need to step onto the first before we can move to full improvement. And the project itself hasn't lost momentum. It is going on still in the background, but we're working with young people still, particularly with the Children's Council, who we're hoping to work with to form sometime in the new year a youth group. Um, the idea of the formation of the youth group is to allow us to make sure that the children and young people of the area have a say in how the project develops. And that youth group will also be the formative group to help us apply for money from Heritage Lottery Fund, who we're relying on, I must say, at this moment in time, to fund the next stage of the project. So that's work in progress. We're working with the Oasis Academy, and we like to the idea of working with other youth groups on the island. We certainly don't want to exclude anybody, and we'd like everybody to come together where possible. So over the next month or so, there will be letters going out to the youth groups that are in Sheerness on the island, see if they can get together and maybe hold an initial formative meeting to see how we move forward and form a regular group meeting. Um, other things that have been taking place in relation to the project, though, of course, you may recall at the last time I came up, I talked about the Dane Kelly Holmes Trust yeah. and how we're working with unemployed young people in the area. Well, that project's continued. We continue to work with um, well, several groups of young people who've had opportunities for work experience, whether it be on the railways, working actually within beach fields, and even I believe we've had two people who've been employed at the leisure centre as lifeguards. So that's been a real success, actually, and we continue to work with Dan Kelly Holmes Trust to make sure we are presenting those opportunities to young people of the island. Um, and the last thing I have to say is we are, of course, working with Solvara Council, who own the site, and to see where what we have to do in terms of next steps. Um, some people who are um, the more vigilant of us, I guess, may have noticed at uh, the cabinet meetings which Trail Borough Council hold, there has been um, um, something passed to form a limited liability partnership. Now, this is to form a partnership which will look into the future of the site and how the developments may go. So that's a positive step being taken by the council, and we hope to be working with them to make sure that the um, vision of the young people and the people involved in the project so far can really be brought to fruition. Well, it certainly sounds like it's going well. Is there uh, anything else happening that may be of interest to our listeners? Well, I like to think there's always lots of things happening that are of interest to your listeners. And one thing I will mention, I'm sure that I think it's, for me, quite a, an interesting development. Um, over the last few years, I think probably since the London Olympics, there's been a drive to bring health and sport more closely together. And in the past, it hasn't been entirely successful. But there has been a change, I think, in the approach from Sport England, who I'm sure you're aware are the national governing body that manage all of the governing bodies of sport um, in a strategic manner. Now, Sport England um, did release a campaign called This Girl Can. You may recall, actually, if you're a Coronation Street viewer, 
and then the advert was launched in between two halves of the programs. It's the first time anything like that has happened. And it's all about um, women taking part in exercise and activity, not being embarrassed, and actually putting forward a, a conventional and normal body image rather than everything being um, aimed at supermodels and super achievement. And I think that's really translated well into um, engagement with the health agenda. And for us locally, one of the things that's happening, I was at the um, AGM of the local commissioning group, which is the group that looks at service provision with the NHS locally. And we're talking together about, and we're arranging a meeting so we can see how we can work together to try and bring the leisure facilities and health more closely together. So things like promoting people who may benefit from going swimming, going to the gym, and making arrangements so that actually we do work together rather than just talking and not actually trying to make anything tangible happen. So uh, for me, that's quite a major development, but there's some work to be done yet. Well, if you're happy we've covered everything, uh, as always, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time out to talk to us here at BRFM. It's, as always, appreciated. Thank you very much, and I'll look forward to seeing you at our next um, interview. No, we, we, we will do. Thanks very much.